everyone, and welcome to this edition of She Flourishes. We're super excited you're here. My name is Eden Richardson, and I'm the Discipleship Director here at First Baptist Church, Rock Hill. Today we have a special episode because we have two lovely ladies that are going to be on with us today. So Eva Taylor and Riley Schrantz both interned at First Baptist this past summer, and they learned a lot, right? They got to do some practical hands-on ministry things, um, and they got to be involved with our with our camps this summer and everything that we had going on here at First Baptist this summer. So you had a busy summer, right? Yes. Yeah, and I'm sure you learned yeah. a lot, and yeah. so we're very excited to hear from you this morning about what God taught you here uh, in your internship at First Baptist this summer. Uh, both girls are sensing a call to ministry, so as we go on with the podcast, you'll get to hear a little bit more about that as well. Um, but before we dive in, I want to know, I, I know about you, right? But I want the people that are watching to learn a little bit more about you. So Riley, we'll start with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so my name is Riley Schrantz. I'm a senior at Westminster and um, I'm 17. I play soccer and I really want to be a missionary awesome. overseas. I love it. <laughs> Very good. Okay, Eva? Well, I'm also 17. I go to Lake Point Academy. I'm a senior at Lake Point Academy. Um, Eva Taylor, my name. <laughs> um, I played volleyball for six years. Um been at First Baptist almost 18 years, so yeah. my whole life. Um, I enjoy photography. What else is interesting? I love the beach. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So you can see that both girls are sensing a call to ministry, and it was super fun getting to work with you guys and kind of explore a little bit more about what that would look like for your lives as you continue to follow God. But we want to hear a little bit more this morning about you're sensing, you're sensing God's calling to ministry. What did that look like for you when God called you? I want to hear more about that experience. So tell us a little bit about how God called you into ministry. Eva, we'll start with you on this one. Okay. Buckle up. I have a lot. Okay. So I honestly have to start. I don't remember the year. I want to say it's 2022 of one night yeah. at our church. And, um, it was at the end, he, the, Man, the speaker was asking anyone who's feeling called to ministry, stand up. We'll go talk to an adult and pray with you about it. And I did. And uh, it was when Chris Howe was still here, and I talked to him yeah. and prayed with him. And from that point, yes, I knew I wanted to do ministry. I didn't know where to take that, though. I didn't know what to do with it. So I kind of just lived my life. And then until December 2022, at mm -hmm. Summit which is an evangelizing camp that was teaching us how to evangelize and talk to people about the gospel. And that was the best experience of my life. Um, it, it was really teaching me how to share the gospel, and I didn't know how. I was really scared to, honestly. Yeah. Like, I knew the things to say. I knew the Bible, but I didn't know how to do it or approach people like it. So there I learned... A Bible verse that encouraged me so much. It's 1 Timothy 4.12. Let no one despise you, your youth, but be an example to the believers in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. And this Bible verse, a little context, it's Paul talking to Timothy. Timothy is super young, and he's scared to show the gospel. He's just like, God can't use me, I'm young. Which Paul is telling him, God's going to use you at any age. He's right. going to use you at any situation in life. And that really like spoke to me like, God's going to use me if he wants to. He's going to. Yeah. So that experience really changed my life, and that Bible verse really encouraged me. And um, I feel like from that point on, from me sharing the gospel, I really came to life with talking to people. I was told, like, you look like you're glowing when you're sharing the gospel. I feel like mm -hmm. it was just a whole new life for me. I was like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. So from that point, I knew I wanted to do that. I really knew I wanted to do that. I just, I still didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So then from that point, there was one Sunday, the pastor was talking to specifically the young students in the room. He's like, mm -hmm. if you are feeling called to ministry, stand up and talk to a pastor. And I did. And I actually ended up talking to our executive pa pastor, Steve Polk. Mm -hmm. And from that point, I told him like, uh, my calling for ministry. And it was so crazy, like the next week, so many opportunities came popping up for me to share the gospel, be involved with the church of, yes, I was already helping with B4, 
45, Mm -hmm. but Grant opened up the doors of me teaching. And uh, not just at the church, but at my school, I was able to share more small groups and Mm -hmm. talk to the whole school about the gospel. Yeah. So, yeah. That's incredible. I love hearing all the different ways the Lord has made your path clear, and He'll continue to do that as you follow His call in the ministry. So that's really great, Eva. Riley, what about you? Um, so mine started at like a very young age. I, I was raised in a very—I lived with my grandparents, mm-hmm. but I had a lot of low-income family and just family that were really out of touch and didn't understand— um, what it was like to be loved and cared for. And I didn't have a good relationship with my parents. So I really got involved with the church when I was younger, but I turned away because I just, you know, I didn't really feel like I had an opportunity. And, but ever since then, I felt a love for travel and like understanding other people's situation, understanding their culture. Mm -hmm. And, but there was no job that was like practical. Yeah. And so I was like, I don't really know how I'm going to pursue this at all. So I just kind of gave up. But I, um, when I like actually surrendered my life to Christ and I started, um, really following him, I just, I learned more about like mission work and the opportunities just through opportunities we've had at this church. And then at summit was when I really surrendered. Like I, connected with my leader. Her name was Rachel. And, um, we just kind of talked about what it's like to, um, reach people who like unreached people groups, unengaged people groups, like learning to translate the Bible into their language. And that was something that I've, I just like, I felt such a weight on my heart because these people had no idea. They, they've never encountered the gospel and they've never learned, like there's someone who loved them so much. And that's just, I, ever since then, I felt so called to that walk of life and just living overseas. Yeah. So That's awesome. Yeah. It's super encouraging to hear, because y'all are both 17, right? I felt like I was your age yesterday, so I'm 27. <laughs> and so I can just tell you from now on out, it is such an adventure and such a beautiful blessing, getting to see the Lord clearly pave a way for you wherever He calls you, and He will be faithful to do that. So I cannot wait to continue to walk alongside you and hear how God makes your path clear as you follow your calling into ministry. So um, in case you didn't know, you interned at First Baptist this summer, right? <laughs> that was your day-to-day job. And we had so much fun. I felt like I learned from you guys as well. I know you probably learned from us, but I personally learned from you. Um, and so it's been super fun getting to have you. And I miss having you already. But I want to hear a little bit more about and tell our, our listeners today what you did in your internship. What what did you do? Everything. <laughs> yeah, literally everything. There was a day when even I had to go to the chiropractor and I just was spot cleaning tablecloths. <laughs> yes. Yes. But uh-huh. there was a lot more like we got to chaperone. That mm-hmm. was fun. I like chaperone. A kid salt? Yeah, a kid salt. A kid salt. And visiting the people in the retirement homes was really mm-hmm. fun. And yeah. then when you were away at Somersault, I went with our pastor Jamie and went with the senior adults to Strawberry Hills, which was actually a lot of fun. That sounds fun. And and we cleaned kitchen. Oh, I was so happy that that was clean. Yeah. And closets. And the closet. I know, the closet. (laughs) We're going to talk about the closet. The (laughs) amount of organizing that just like, oh, it was... Good job. Thank you. I didn't get one. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) But it was was so much fun. And like, you really got to connect. Like, I got to connect with Star when we were cleaning the closet. Shout out Star. Albert, we love you. Shout out. (laughs) And then, um, obviously you. And then Mm -hmm. connect with Graham when we were cleaning the closet. Linda Crew got to help us as well. So that was good. Oh, (laughs) right. You. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Yeah. So you guys, yeah, exactly. I felt like every single week here, you had something different going on. So you were very hands-on involved with, with Vacation Bible School. That was kind of right when you got here. You just jumped right in uh, to one of our busiest weeks of the summer, which was super fun for you guys. And then you went to Kidsall uh, with Grant and the fourth and fifth graders. Um, I think you also did music camp as well with Steve White and Kim Sloan. And so you hit all the high marks this summer with all the different uh, uh, things that we were 
were doing as far as a uh, church-wide ministry. And so what, you also did a lot of practical things. And so you mentioned the decor closet. So I, I'll go ahead and say, uh, I think this was one of the lessons you guys learned too, is a lot of the, the, the things that you do in ministry are behind the scenes. Um, of course, a lot of the times you're in front of people or you're, you're doing things that are more, um, more seen, but a lot of the stuff that, that we get to do is unseen. Um, but it's, we have to do those things as well because that's also ministry. So cleaning the de- decoration closets, that's a good thing because, right, because as that closet is cleaned, it makes it easier to do do events and find where things are at. So everything uh, that we do here, whether it's seen or unseen, serves serves a purpose and serves our God in the same way. Um, and so the decorations closet, we got to clean out this summer, which took a long time, I would say, because there's a lot of things to sort through. But I loved getting to have Linda and Star help us do that. And you girls did a fabulous job with that as well. Um, but but kind of along that same vein, uh, teach tell us what you learned this summer from your internship at First Baptist. I think the decoration closet, cleaning that out, was a big lesson for you guys because you got to see a lot of times in ministry it's the behind-the-scenes work, but it's also just as important. But I want to hear a little bit more from you guys what you learned this summer. Uh, and I honestly would say the biggest takeaway is that the behind the scenes of ministry is the, like we've been told, 70, 80, 90% of ministry. Yeah. And I would say if you're joining, if you want to do ministry because you just want to be on stage, it's not the right reason to go into ministry. Mic drop. There's a mic, <laughs> but I'm not going to drop this one. Yeah. Mic drop, we just throw them. <laughs> <laughs> mic throw. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's my takeaway. Yeah. What about you, Riley? Um, I'd say for me, I learned a lot during the times, like the independent projects we had to do, Mm -hmm. like how important it is to um, feed yourself and like remain in the word because it's impossible. Like there have been times in the past where my friends have had questions about the Bible and I I don't know. And like, because I I haven't been spending time like actually in God's word and like being able to do independent projects and doing the reading plan and Mm -hmm. like, and just meeting about like the books that we were reading. It really helped me just understand my own personal walk with the Lord more, which was really important because I feel like I've learned so much more now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a really good point because I feel like, you know, as people in ministry, as leaders, you know, and and honestly, just as disciples, the way we keep ourselves healthy is by abiding in the word, right? We cannot do public ministry. We cannot go uh, and share the gospel or, or love people well if we're not abiding in Christ and having his love flow out of us. So I was really excited to get to spend a little bit of time with you guys this summer, just hearing what God's teaching you personally as you continue to grow in him. So I, I love that you were engaged with our Bible reading plan and, and going through our here journals. I would encourage you to keep doing that um, because that's one way that you will grow as a disciple is by abiding in him. Um, that keeps your heart clean um, and that keeps you close to the Lord as you do so. Um, so that's really good. Now, we're going to miss you, right? I, I feel like you were just you just finished your internship yesterday, right? We're going to miss you this summer um, and this fall because you did such a great job this summer interning. Um, but I want to ask you, how will your internship that you had at First Baptist this past summer help you as you continue to follow God's call in the ministry? Uh, let's see. Eva, we'll start with you on that one. Well, I just I know that at the, the very first day of our internship, we were told that the plan— Y'all, y'all's plan for us was to like exhaust us like, <laughs> to, <laughs> hit every, yes, okay. how, to hit every yes to hit every high point of the yeah, summer and we did mm-hmm. and the low points were very low but <laughs> <Who knows? laughs> um, they're saying that at the end of the summer you're gonna we're gonna be exhausted mm-hmm. and if you're still feeling called to ministry, then it was a true calling. Mm, yeah. And yeah, that's, dope. that's really good. Speaking for myself, I am exhausted at the end of the summer, but mm-hmm. I still feel called to ministry. Good. So I feel like that really, because it, it was just really teaching me and yeah. helping me see all the parts of ministry. And you gained some stamina too after kind of yeah. realizing what the day in, day out rigor looks like, right? That you kind of build a little bit more stamina too. So I was really proud of you guys for both doing that. So uh, Riley, what about you? Um, I definitely, I definitely learned to how to handle different personalities Yeah, and um, how to 
handle my emotions as well. Because towards the beginning of the summer, I was like, I still am very, I feel everything very strongly and like it's all on my face how I'm feeling. <laughs> but like I've, I've learned a lot more about how to just kind of keep my emotions in, not to the point where I'm mm-hmm. bottling them in to the point where I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah. But just to the point where I'm able to still love others and so I think that's something that I'm going to keep with me that I've learned during this internship that's really going to help me as I go forward. And I'm s- seeing people in different cultures with different backgrounds mm-hmm. just to love them well. And if they, you know, if they hurt my feelings, like that's, yeah. I still need to love them. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Going off of that, just like a little side note, I learned that like, like if you're trying to be a people pleaser, like Jesus couldn't please everybody. Mm-hmm. We're not trying to please everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've learned that. You guys learned a lot. Yeah, and you're right. There there are different personalities that, that you work with, right? Not everybody is outgoing or bubbly. Not everybody is reserved or quiet. So <laughs> you just learn how how to work with, with all, all personalities, which is so very good because we need every personality. We yes. need every demographic, every age in the body of Christ because we all build up one another and benefit from one another. I am glad that that there are not a ton of me, right? Because I think that would be a lot, right? But but so you need you need people of of different personalities because you it all we all balance each other out in that way. So that that's a good point that you mentioned. Now, we all had some favorite moments with you this summer, right? I can think of several right now that I was like, oh, I loved this moment with Eva or this moment with with Riley. But I want to ask you, what were some of your favorite memories this summer? Uh, Riley, we'll start with you on this one. Um, I mean, I love visiting the people in assisted living. That was probably my favorite, like, ministry moment that we had. Um, I got to, I did a lot of arts and crafts (laughs) to decorate my little cubicle office thing and also for my Bible. Um, Eva and I laughed a lot. We played a lot of Uno, Mm -hmm. a lot of Crazy Eights in in the downtime, like, in between, um, work and VBS we would play crazy eights with Jay and Will shout out Jay and Will um and yeah just a lot of there was a lot of community in the office as well and I really liked that but I assisted living was probably my favorite um yeah hmm. yeah that's awesome what about you Eva I I mean making the videos are so much fun to do yeah (laughs) I mean those bloopers were very real they happened anyway uh, music camp. I really enjoyed music camp. It was the first music camp I've ever been to, and I really enjoyed that and VPS. Yeah. Loved it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I love that so much. So you guys are seniors in high school now, which means college is is right on ahead. So I wanna I wanna ask you guys, you know, going forward, what are your plans as you continue to pursue God's call into ministry? Uh, Eva, we'll start with you on this one. Well, I if college is the right choice for me, I really hope to attend North Greenville University and GU. Go crew. <laughs> yeah. It's um, best. to major in Christian studies. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. What about you, Riley? Um, I plan on attending Charleston Southern and I want to major in interdisciplinary studies. Yeah. So yeah, and you know, because you guys are choosing to go to some great Baptist universities here, right in the state of South Carolina, um, I'm excited for you guys because I feel like I'll still get to see you in some way as you come home to visit. But I want to encourage you that as you go out to college, uh, continue to keep God's calling first in your heart, right? Rem- remind yourself every day uh, of what He's calling you to and dive right in, right? Dive right in, into every ministry opportunity because it's as you serve, right? It's as you serve. Uh, in, in the local church uh, amongst the body of believers that God will continue to make your, your path clear. So I encourage you, keep serving, keep loving Jesus, right? Keep following his call uh, and he will continue to make your path clear for you. Um, but you know, that's so much fun though, uh, thinking about college. I feel like I was just there yesterday. Um, but you know, hopefully in between college, you'll come back home to First Baptist. You know, you always have a home here. I want to ask you, because you still have about a year or so before you go to college, how do you currently serve at First Baptist? Baptist. Uh, let's see, Riley, we'll start with you. Um, I plan on continuing to help Jordan up here. And like, I love doing the slides and like the pastor notes and the worship. Yeah. The first couple or the first time I did it, I messed up really bad, but it's, it's fine. It's okay. We all learn I, mistakes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep doing that probably. Awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. What about you? 
Well, <clears throat> obviously, I've mentioned before I do B45. Uh, but before that, I was in orchestra because I played violin for nine years. But then I was like, it's not really the place for me. So then I decided to do choir because my whole family does choir. Yeah. I'm pretty soon, but it yeah. wasn't the place for me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, b 45 Good, good. Keep serving. Uh, it is so much fun. Uh, you, you get to see God work. I feel like when you serve, you get to see God at work on a front row seat, right? Because you're right there in it. Um, and you also build community that way, too. So keep serving. Uh, keep growing in your walk with Jesus. So... We're kind of wrapping up this podcast, which is sad because I feel this has been a lot of fun with you guys. Um, But what I want to ask you, and it doesn't have to be even related to your internship, and we've talked about it a little bit, but what would you say what is your biggest takeaway from what you learned this summer? Or what would you say is the biggest lesson that God taught you this summer? Uh, Riley, we'll start with you. Um, I learned this at Somersault, but just... That when you abide in the Lord and you you're actively pursuing Him, there's and also from the Just Do Something book, Mm -hmm. if you're aligning yourself with Christ, there's really like there's going to be opportunities that are going to come to you, but also you don't just need to sit around and wait. Right. Like right. I just there's so many things that I want to do, and I'm like, well, let me let me pray about it, which is a good thing to do. Yes, pray. But I don't just want to sit there and be like, hmm, when's this going to fall into my lap? Like, yeah. I no. need some chips while <laughs> God unravels his plane from my I know, life, right? right? Yeah. But like, <laughs> it's, there's things that I, I plan on just pursuing further because I have, um, the strength and the courage just from following the Lord. So, yeah, it's a good point. We pray and we work and we work and we pray and we see what God does, uh, with our faithfulness and as we abide in him. So that's really good. Eva, what about you? Honestly, that this calling is true. It's a true calling to ministry. And I'm honestly just really excited to see where God's going to take this. Yeah, absolutely. You made it through the exhaustion. Good job. I did. <laughs> you both did. You made it through spot cleaning. You made it yeah. through spot cleaning. If you can make it through spot cleaning, you can make it through anything. And licking like a hundred envelopes. Yes. I got a paper disgusting. cut on my tongue. Yes. It's disgusting. Sometimes it's blood, sweat, and tears, girls. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It is so much fun. Uh, well, I have loved, personally, I have loved getting to know you guys better this summer through your internship. So thank you for all the hard work that, that you did. You're definitely missed. Um, and I think you have a funny story. My last question for you both <laughs> is what was the funniest moment of your summer? And you said a while ago that, that you weren't going to tell me until this moment. So now the moment has arrived. So who, who wants to start? I think okay. you do. Okay. Okay. So we, um, we were calling churches for the blended family conference and we both had some crazy bloopers. We got sent to voicemail. Thank goodness. But me personally, my blooper was, <laughs> we were leaving a voicemail for this church and I was like, I, I got nervous and I started rambling a little bit and I was like, nervous rambling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, so just call me back if you're interested. I promise it's not a scam. <laughs> and I was like, cause I was so like, I was so Again, scared. It's, free. it's not a scam. Again, it's like, remember this is free registration. It's not a scam. And then I like, I was, I, I didn't know what to do. So I just went. I hung up. <laughs> Did he ever call back? Do we know? No. no. Okay. <laughs> but I, we had some people who really did want to know more. Absolutely. But I, I, I fear he might have thought it was a scam because mm-hmm. I said it wasn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. He thought the opposite of what you said. Yeah. Yes. Then you sat yourself out and then hung up the phone. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh no. <laughs> what about you, Eva? So apparently I don't know how to leave voicemail. So the first yeah, time, uh, voicemail <laughs> etiquette. Yeah, so the first time I was leaving a voicemail, I didn't know how to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. So I was just like, "Wait, how do you turn this off?" Because I started like messing up and laughing. I was like, and Riley was just laughing at me. I'm like, "How do you stop it?" And it was still going on. So she just hung up. Oh, so that person I'm so heard. sorry to yeah. those churches who heard this. <laughs> yeah, this was our like we were like trial running. We didn't know I. We had a script, but still, she messed up, and she was like, how do I start over? And I was like, and I just hung up. <laughs> just hung up the phone. Yeah. Well, now you know the feature. If you ever need to call someone, how to... Rehearse. Yes, how to rehearse and, and how to end a phone call. So, very good. Another one, your, she was ending a, a voicemail. No. <laughs> and she just said amen at the end. Oh, yeah. Amen. I forgot. 
I forgot how to say bye. And I was just like, so, you know, amen. <laughs> You know, that, that's fine. You know, sometimes sometimes you just need to shout out and praise the Lord. Sometimes bi is just not enough. <laughs> so oh my. that's really good. Well, I have loved this podcast with you girls today. I hope that you guys who are listening in or watching have gotten to learn a little bit from these girls about how passionate they are about following God's calling on their lives. And I would pray that you would continue to support them as they continue to pursue God's calling for their lives and as they look forward to their senior year of high school and college and all the the fun life things that happen as you are a 17 18 19 year old so we love you ladies so much thank you for joining us in we hope to see you on our next episode of she flourishes